Lord of mercy. Let's see what's going on. I got a warm up. And as with anything in life, you, you got to find yourself first, you know? There's a lot of times you're out there, you're not the real you. And it's either somebody comes along and then makes a switch inside of you or something, you know, flips a switch and then it turns you on. You know, it just brings you into a, a complete new place. And even though you, you probably thought that you were big and bad and, and the real deal before, sometimes, you know, something just kind of shocks you up, man. It can have adverse effect as well. Because it can be something that wakes you up and then you just kind of feel you're in the wrong room. But <laughs> there this time comes when you, you meet this person or persons and they make that right switch and, and it's just everything to you. And then your life just starts. And your business and everything, whatever it is, it just seems like, why didn't I think of this before? because it's just waking you up. So I call it finding yourself. And I mean, I say that because those who have known my story will know that I wasn't always, you know, the, the sort of finished Levi Roots as I am now. As a matter of fact, if you, if you knew of me before, the stories is not pretty. But it was when I found my true mentor, somebody who really believed in me, Someone that wasn't just telling me stories, but just was willing to put their money where their mouth is. And that was my change, man, you know. And the music has part to do with it as well. So that's why I, I like to start with the music, just to kind of get myself into my vibes. Because this is my vibes. And if, you, if there's anything you're going to pick up from my vibes tonight, it's going to be about being real. It's going to be about being true to your own self. I think it was Shakespeare that first said that. Be, be true to who you are. And even though I always think that I perhaps was the most rubbishest person on Dragons Den ever. Because I got everything wrong. I was like sweating profusely and I was like saying all the wrong numbers and everything like that. But it was me. It was the real me. And that's what the Dragons invested. They didn't invest in the Fowl's Levi Roots that I used to be before. As a matter of fact, back then I was probably Keith. Couldn't focus. But with Levi Roots I could. So the music, man. T goes the tack, Rolex my watch, Savile Row suits and diamonds in my locks. I'm taller than Shaq, I'm madder than Max. I'm so swaggerific with my style and panache. I've got head bars a track just before I relax. And I'm rolling with Rihanna and they do Jamie Foxx. I'm like Cocky the Cat, I'm like Roland or Rat. I can be a poly tata in a suffer winter, cause I'm hot. So hot. Yeah, so hot I am. <laughs> I ain't never seen you so hot. So hot. So hot. Everyone's hot tonight, baby. Respect. Yeah. Start. Start. It's been a fantastic journey, it really has, you know. I suppose my story starts, I've got to start it with the effect that my grandmother's story had on and, and everything, and my mom. Because those that know the creation of the sauce will know that for me it was just that when I took my grandmother's recipe and I sort of put a little twist to it and made it my own, and that's where the whole thing started. But I suppose her influence on me as a, as a young boy is everything to me and that's why whenever time I do a talk or whenever time I reason with people I try to get that across that that was the change for me that was the metamorphosis for me is about the people that helps to bring to bring my life together and my business 
as much as it was discovered in Dragon's Den, I don't think that I started with Dragon's Den. I don't think the moment in TV had sort of changed me into being who I am. I think that I was always Levi Roots, capable of doing everything that I, that I have done so far. But as I was saying in that introduction, it's the someone or something that comes along that makes that switch, that changes you. And for a long time, I, I wasn't Levi Roots. I actually was what my father wanted me to be, which was, I ended up with a Scottish name like Keith Graham, and I used to always think of that, why the hell do I have a name like that? And trying to get that change and find out who I am. And it was while in the middle of trying to find that change that I discovered that I'm not Keith, the Scottish guy, I'm actually Levi Roots, the African via Jamaican. And then to take that and to turn my life around completely. So afterwards, because you know what it's like, getting somewhere is one thing, but the most important thing is how you stay there. I think most of you will be familiar with the story of Dragon's Den and my connection with Peter Jones and having the sauce in Sainsbury's. I, th I think the most important thing to remember about the sauce there is that actually Caribbean food was discovered when I was on Dragon's Den at that particular moment. Even though we'd have been around for so many years before, nobody noticed us. It took something special for me to be able to make a fool of myself on television, for people to wake up to the sense that we have this fantastic cuisine and that it's not just about Jamaica, it's a plethora of islands in the Caribbean. And that's how I've managed to sort of take my grandmother's recipe, help Caribbean food to get where it is. But now the next step is about where do I go with that? How do I sustain what I've created so far? And it's all about still staying very close to what I've done. I don't think there's a great science of me changing the brand from coming from the, the guy that stood up on Dragon's Den with the same guitar and, and sang a little song and, and brought the sauce into your consciousness. I don't think I have to do much more than that. As a matter of fact, I do think that if I do more than that, it will be the damage. It will be damaging the brand. Because whatever you saw on Dragon's Den, whatever you, you've heard of my story, coming up to this point. It's all been how I'm making of me. I wouldn't change anything. I mean, even the bad part of my life before, a lot of people ask me about that. They know my story. And I would still say that whatever path I've taken, that's still the same path I would have chosen. Who knows if you change your life with hindsight? Who knows if I had perhaps not given up the music for a while and concentrated on the source, what would have happened? Because I suppose that was the most difficult thing for me to do when I, when I wanted to start the business of the food, is to actually put the guitar down and to do something else. Because for a long time I was stuck into that comfort zone of, of something that you love and something that you're passionate about, which is quite dangerous, especially with things like music. Because you always think that the next album is going to be the one that makes you, or the next song is going to be the one that breaks you. But it never happens, really. But you're stuck in that comfort zone so much. But then again, it's about the person that comes up, makes that switch. Or sometimes it's even you yourself that does that switch to recognize that you are in a comfort zone or something that's not working and you've got to get yourself out of it. It was the most difficult thing when I did realize that actually the music is not going to give me the things that I really wanted on its own, you know. And for me, that was a, a massive admission for myself when I had to wake up. Been doing music for 30 years and still couldn't buy my kids the stuff that I really wanted to get them. But coming out of that comfort zone was the biggest decision that I, that I ever made, was to not completely put down the guitar, because I did give the sauce the name Reggae Reggae Sauce, and when you look at the colors, it's, it's the colors of Rastafari, it represents Jamaica, and it represents who I am. So I didn't really go too far from the bar. And I think that's part of my lesson here as well. I think you've got to remain who you are. But also, you've got to be wise up about marketing and stuff like that. And that's the kind of things that I learned when Peter Jones, my mentor, said to me that, Levi, be yourself, be who you are, because that's what I invested in. As opposed to my other investor, you'll know that there were two dragons that invested in me. The other was Richard Farley. I think Richard invested in the sauce, which is a big difference to what Peter invested in, the man Levi Rose, that allowed me to sort of become now the brand, um, whereas Richard invested in the sauce. Um, I think it was about 18 months after that that he wanted to sort of get out of the business, which for me was a detrimental part of it because 
anybody could have brought Richard Shearer and he could have come into it. And then they would have told me that, Levi, perhaps you need to change a little bit. You, you don't need to have the, the colors of Rastafari on the bottle because a lot of people at that time probably would have thought that a sauce that was going mainstream shouldn't look like green, gold, and red like a Rasta. Uh, most of people that I met along the way did say to me, Levi, change it. Um, that it, it was too stereotype and things like that. But I wanted it to be about me. I, I wanted to be true to who I am. I wanted people to look at the brand and remember the moment that they saw me or they experienced my, my brief moment on Dragon's Den. And that's why we kept the integrity of it. So I, I don't think I'll have to move too far to take the brand to the next level. And that's because the brand is about me. If you do have a brand or you're thinking about going into business yourself, that would be my biggest advice to you, is to be the brand. Make the brand about you. If you, if you are coming to me for investment, if you are, or advice or anything like that, I would be looking into your eyes and seeing whether or not I can see what Peter saw in my eyes. Because I was brave enough to go on a show about business and enterprise with a guitar because I was passionate about the things that I did. I, I wanted those dragons to look in my eyes and trust when I said to them that my sauce called reggae reggae sauce can outsell Heinz tomato ketchup. That's a big deal. Can you imagine that? Me looking into the eyes of someone like a Justin King, the chief of Sainsbury's, and confidently saying to him, you know, Mr. King, you know, this man is like, he's like God when it comes to um, supermarkets and things. And looking in his eyes and saying, Mr. King, my sauce is going to outsell the biggest sauce in the entire universe, which is Heinz. And I did do that. I looked at him and I, I told him, I said to him, this is it. But I, I, vividly now I can remember saying that to Justin King. We were still making the sauce at home at the time when I was telling him that. <laughs> and I was really worried that he's going to like, you know, make too much of a quick order. But before I knew it, you know, Justin ordered 250,000 bottles. There you go. So for us, it was just a quickly switch again. And this is another point that I'd like to make across because sometimes you've got to be careful what you ask for because there I was saying that I'm go I've got the most fantastic product. And then all of a sudden, the man hoarded so much sauce that there is no way, absolutely no way I could have filled that order. Because my thing on Dragon's Den was to get 50,000 pounds, start small, to get a factory, because that's what I thought the business would have done. But an investor came in, and then the manufacturer came in. 250,000, quarter of a million bottles of sauce. And when a f manufacturer's like, or a, a supermarket like Sainsbury's ask you to do that, they're not going to wait around for months for you to build factories and to bring it. They want it like now, you've got to bring it, otherwise you lose that. So for me, it was just quickly making that switch again in the head by my mentor, Peter, and says, this is not about building a small factory and starting small. This is about a branding opportunity. This is the making of the brand Levi. So not anymore was the brand reggae reggae sauce. The opportunity was now rising for the brand to be Levi Roots. And if that's the case, what we had to do now is to become a licensing company. Whereas the most important thing to me at that point wasn't anything else and, and, and that. It wasn't the, the sort of surrounding things around the business. It was just about me. That was the brand itself. So we got a company called AB Royal Foods, one of the largest sort of food manufacturers does sauces, to make the sauce. And all I did was just to sort of um, sign over the rights for them to make the sauce for me. And I take a percentage of the profits from the sauce. And Sainsbury's could have their order within two weeks which actually was a, a record for any sort of products coming from scratch to, 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 to facilitate a, a supermarket like Sainsbury's, a quarter of a million bottles of sauce in a matter of weeks. And then after the third week, when it was out just one week, the news did come back that Levi, your sauce is out selling nice tomato ketchup. <coughs> so for us, that was a, a, a wonderful achievement and a fantastic thing to do. But I, th I don't think I would have done that without Peter giving me that, that encouragement. And the reason why I keep going to that man is because I think mentorship is, is the most biggest part of any conversation that I can have. It is certainly is the most important sort of lesson I can, I can tell you, or advice I can tell you about how you get your business off to the next level. Because without him, I don't think I would have been here. The investment is one thing, and we've got to be, always be careful about that. Because a lot of people always look upon that initial investment as the end of all of, of the business. 
But you know, that, that money is only the setup. Because to tell you the truth, I never saw a penny of that 50,000 pounds that I got from Dragons then. Absolutely nothing. It went straight into the business and never came out again at all. But at the time, I remember a lot of people, were, even I was thinking, you know, when I got 50,000 pounds, I never even had 50,000 pence in my life before, saved up in one go. But it was just the challenge of seeing how do you do that? How do you get where people like Peter Jones and Richard Farley and all these people are? How do you get a Rastaman from Brixton? Does he really belong there? In amongst these people who's got a fantastic business and, and is, we always see on TV that inspires us? Of course we do. Absolutely. I always say business doesn't belong to anybody. Nobody owns it. Anybody can, can do business. I just said there earlier about my legacy, what I'd like to re be remembered at, and it's precisely that. If I can do it, then I think that anyone can do it. There is no magic portions. As I said before, I don't think that I was any good on Dragons then. I, I was really rubbish on there. But the Dragons aren't looking for perfectuality. They're not looking for you to be perfect. No investors are. As a matter of fact, investors love rough diamonds because that's what they're there for. I mean, if they see you, you know, showing off and being Mrs. or Mr. Know-it-all and stuff like that, they probably think that they can't hide anything, anything at all. I do think that my appeal to the dragons or, or to the investors was the fact that I had the passion. It seems like I wanted it. It seems like I had a work ethics and I'd done my, my research before. This is all they needed that they needed from me. They didn't need me to sort of come across and answer in every question. So even though, you know, when I watched back the show afterwards with my children, even though I, we knew that, you know, I'd won the stuff like that, but the way the BBC had sort of edited the stuff together, even I thought that meant like, Lord, Daddy, you're not going to win. <laughs> and even though we knew we'd gone through, because it, it was exactly like that, you know, as I said, for me, it was just the most powerful moment to go in and be me, be, be me. The sweating, the, the numbers and everything, that was me. I would never change anything like that because that is what the Dragons invested. And if you are to get an investment out there, if you are to get your own mentor and, and to move on to your next level, you can only do that by being you. And if you haven't found you yet, then you need to find somebody else who can dig deep in you and find, and find the real you, the one that you'll be proud to represent your brand, the one that you'll be proud to stand up in front of anybody and say, this is my business, and if you buy it, you're buying a part of me. I love the fact that when people you know, invest, I don't even say buy, I like to say invest in my, in my product. I don't think they're buying it as, as though they would buy a, an ordinary sauce out there, you know. You go in the shop and you get a bottle of Heinz tomato ketchup and you pour it on and, and it's like it's no tomorrow. I like to think that when they pick up a, a, a sort of bottle of my sauce, it's like, it's so nice I had to name it twice. <laughs> and have that vibes of what it is about and, and the reasons why I brought it to their consciousness. And, and most brands that we invest in and we enjoy, I mean, even, you know, God forbid it, our fashion brands on the ice streets that we spend so much money on. We make an investment to these brands because they bring something to our consciousness, you know. We either admire other people that wear the perfume or wear the clothes or whatever it is, and then we try to emulate that. And that's what brands are. Food brands are, music brands or anything are absolutely no different. You probably heard the Ferrari that's going around with Beyonce's new album at the moment. And I can tell you right now, a lot of that is marketing because that's what it's about, marketing herself. So market yourself. But if you've tried everything and you failed and, you know, at the very sound of numbers, you break out into a cold sweat like me, then perhaps write to me and I'll lend you the reggae reggae sauce song. Now that will work. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and watch the rest of our talks below.